let's jump right into the first of the two Saturday football games. Pittsburgh at Baltimore, Ravens underdogs by three and a half at home. The total 36 and a half. Uh, luck rankings, Pittsburgh, number one luckiest team again. So they're back at number <laughs> one. Baltimore's 12th. Uh, so, I mean, Pittsburgh, you know, weighing over a field goal on the road. This is this is one where, I mean, I, I, I could see Baltimore hanging tough here and, uh, you know, potentially winning this game. I mean, Tyra Huntley's proven competent. Uh, as a backup before. So uh, any thoughts on the luck rankings there with Pittsburgh back in that number one spot? Yeah, well, I mean, when it comes to week 18, luck rankings are very tricky. Um, It didn't do so well last year. And I think just because there's so many other variables, especially when it Mm -hmm. comes to a team like the Ravens, where we don't even know if they're playing their starters. So I I tend to just play it straight up. Um, And yeah, it does seem like a lot, especially considering the Ravens could still play their starters for the first half. I was telling people, if you think that's the case, take the Ravens plus a half uh, in the first half right now. Get ahead of that. Um, the other thing is, you know, the Ravens, they've been so dominant in the preseason, so they're very equipped to, to win games with their backups. They've done it a bunch. So this is a sneaky spot. Uh, I haven't seen where, like, the betting public is for this. I think they would be hammering the Steelers, right? Uh, but that's something I, I think will probably factor into where, where I ultimately think the value is, but uh, right now it's, it's too soon to tell like how the Ravens are going to handle this. So according to the public betting data and the action app, 85% of the bets, 95% of the money on the Baltimore Ravens. Ooh, okay. And uh, we've also tracked seven sharp moves on the Baltimore Ravens. So yeah, I, I guess people have kind of on, on the same train of thought as, me, yeah. as us. It was like, Hey, like this, uh, this Raven team, even with, Huntley starting would be a pretty live, yeah, uh, li- pretty live dog in this spot. So, um, with that being said, uh, who do you like in the captain spot? Yeah. So, having said that, uh, I like Najee Harris here. Um, you know, the Ravens have nothing to play for. They have the number one seed locked up. We've already talked about it. We don't know how they're going to handle this. They might rest their starters. They might not. Um, so we don't know. But the, as of now, you know, the Steelers are four point favorites. It would make sense for them to be favored here, I guess. Uh, so the possibility of a positive game script where the Steelers lean on Najee uh, is certainly in play here. He's been dominant the, the last couple of games. Uh, he's been averaging 100 r- rushing yards and one and a half touchdowns. Um, and he did this last year. He started off kind of slow. And then as the season went on, he just got better and better. Sort of Derrick Henry-esque. Um, and I-, I would like this even more if, if we knew that Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen were going to get you know, some rest here that that's going to make the matchup better specifically for Najee Harris. Um, so I think, you know, people uh, on the Steelers side might gravitate towards George Pickens. You know, he's had a couple amazing games in a row or even Jalen Warren, who I also like, but I think this game does set up better for Najee to have, you know, a captain worthy type of game here where he scores a couple of touchdowns. Actually, uh, I'm going Pickens here. I like Pickens number yeah. one because I think the the public maybe um you know, or not the public underrating, but like the uh, the chances of a negative game script may be a little underrated with the mm-hmm. Steelers installed as you know three and a half four point favorites here. Baltimore plays the sixth most man coverage. Pickens three and a half yards per route against man leads the team. And just these last two games with Mason Rudolph, we've kind of seen Pickens uh, really kind of show his full potential. He's been targeted 15 times, caught 11 for 326 with a couple of touchdowns on 52 routes and, uh, you know, 100-yard games in back-to-back outings with Rudolph. So I think this is a good spot for uh, Pickens uh, yet again here. And hopefully Baltimore does rest some guys in the secondary. They've been kind of banged up in the secondary all year long. So maybe Humphrey and and Marcus Williams or Hamilton, those guys rest. But either way, I like Pickens here. I think it might – Probably be a close game, honestly, either way. So, mm-hmm. go on, Pickens. Uh, who do you like for value? Uh, so, this is tricky because, again, we don't know how the Ravens are going to handle this. But I'm going to go with Melvin Gordon. Um, you know, depending on how it does look like they're going to handle Gus Edwards and Justice Hill. I could imagine them wanting to limit them somewhat just because they've had such brutal luck when it comes to running backs and injuries the past couple of seasons. You know, they just lost Keaton Mitchell. So, they – even though Edwards and Justice Hill aren't, you know, the guys that you would think they, they would need a bubble wrap, I think they might here. So it, it would make sense to just let Melvin Gordon be the workhorse back here. Uh, so I think he could be, you know, solid value play. But again, it kind of depends 
on, you know, reading the tea leaves and if they make any declarative statements. Uh, but I think Melvin Gordon could end up being the lead back here and get, you know, 10, 15 plus touches here. Yeah. It'll, yeah. They'll, I mean, who do they have? I think they have Owen Wright on the practice squad. So yeah, I don't know if they'll uh, call up anyone or not. Probably not. So yeah, it'll probably be Gordon and those yeah. three. And if, if those guys rest, yeah, Gordon would get a lot of work. Uh, I'm going to go with Odell Beckham here. And, you know, this is another one where, you know, chance he could get ruled out or, or not play, but in the past, Baltimore, the quarterback has been the, the main guy to sit. The, the skill pl- players have played at least somewhat. And Beckham is the one with uh, some incentives up for grabs. Mm-hmm. He would get a uh, 250K for another five catches, which is doable. 500K for two more touchdowns, which would be tough. And uh, 750K for 185 yards. But, you know, they'll probably at least give him some deep balls if he's active to at least try to get him, uh, you know, to some of those incentives. And the five catches, that that's doable. If he gets five catches – you know, he's been targeted down the field a ton. So uh, that could still be, you know, even if he doesn't reach the 185 or the two scores, which are unlikely, it uh, could still be a productive game for Becca. But again, monitor, make sure he's actually going to to play. But if he is, uh, you know, just because he's the one guy with incentives, uh, I think uh, he's a guy that I, I'm going to target for Baltimore at receiver. Uh, dark throws, who you like? Um, yeah, so I like the Beckham call. If he is ruled out, uh, and you know, like Bateman, I'm assuming flowers won't play, uh, Tyler and Wallace would be like a mm-hmm. normal dart throw. I like him. You know, he's their return man, very talented receiver. I'm shocked. He hasn't gotten more opportunity. Uh, so he'd be in play, but this is week 18. Let's go real wild here. Let's go really down the list and let's go with Malik Cunningham, um, as like a true dart throw. Um, you know, he's, going to be listed as quarterback he might be a bit expensive for shutdown slate there's a chance he doesn't even play a snap so he is very risky but since they have nothing to lose here they might throw him out there and just have some packages for him either as a quarterback or wide receiver uh but you know he just has some massive rushing upside he really flashed in preseason so if he does get you know a few rush attempts or a couple receptions they give him the ball uh he's more than capable of you know having a couple explosive runs or catches here. So I think he could be very interesting in large GPPs where I think his roster ship's going to be microscopic, but uh, there's, there's a path for him to have, you know, a handful of touches here and go off. Yeah. I mean, there's even I, I, probably an outside shot. He could get to start. I mean, they could be like, Hey, we know, we know what we <laughs> yeah. got in Huntley. We know what we got in Johnson. Let's just see, yeah. what, you know, no one's really seen Malik Cunningham, uh, you know, play quarterback for an extended period. So I uh, wouldn't rule it out. So yeah, I like that one a lot. Uh, I'm going to go with a guy who, you know, I think a lot of people are going to be looking to the Ravens. You know, you mentioned Wallace, Cunningham, uh, Treadwell assigned to the active mm-hmm. roster. So uh, the backup tight end, Kohler, probably be in play. But I'm going to go with a guy who's in the normal rotation for the Steelers, and that's Calvin Austin the third. He has a, an average depth of target of just under 27 in, in the two games with Rudolph. And I mentioned the Ravens do like to play man coverage. I doubt that will change too much regardless of who they're playing. So, you know, Austin third on the team with 1.8 yards per route against man. He's uh, got a, a rushing touchdown since they switched uh, offensive coordinators too. So, and he will return some uh, punts as well. So uh, like his all around game here, and he's kind of a sneaky one who I think his ownership could be a, a little bit lower with everyone kind of looking for the right mix of, you know, cheap Raven players to use. Mm. Whereas the Steelers, they're still kind of playing, still playing for real. So um I don't think people will be kind of looking to to bargain hunt as much with Pittsburgh. So like, like Austin, the third this week. All right, let's go to Saturday night football. This is a, this should be a good one. Houston at Indianapolis Colts favored by one total 47 and a half, eight fifteen Eastern on ABC and ESPN uh, luck rankings. Both of these teams, top 10 Indianapolis, number two, uh, Houston, number nine. Um, I already bet against number two, Indianapolis uh, with Houston at <laughs> plus one and a half. Uh, no, so sorry. I, I said the spread wrong too. Houston's now favored by one and a half. So oh, the, Colts, okay. the Colts were favored by one and a half when the line opened. It has jumped a full three points. So I got that good thing. I got that plus nice. one and a half. Um, I, I'm still in Houston here. I just think they're, you know, Houston is uh yeah. better quarterback team. And I think the Colts have been getting lucky all year. Um, but you know, they still have a negative point differential, even though they're nine and, and seven. So like, I do like Houston here. Um, but, uh, any thoughts on those, on those luck rankings? Uh, these, I mean, these would kind of yeah. apply a little more because 
both yes. teams are kind of as we've you know they're playing their, yeah. their guys. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, this we would apply the luck rankings to this. Unfortunately, it's not showing much value. Like you mm-hmm. said, they're both in the top ten. Uh, the luck total is you know minus four point two, so it is indicating the under. This is a must win game, so you know both teams are going to be up. Could be lower scoring. I, like maybe the Colts play at a little bit of a slower pace than normal. Um, usually their games are very fast paced and high scoring. So the potential must win environment could, you know, lead towards the under, but I haven't, I haven't gone one way or the other. I wish I was with you on getting points with the Texans already, but uh, <laughs> that, that line move has already happened. So I guess it's too late for me, but yeah, I would, I would be with you on here leaning the Texans with CJ Stroud back. All right. And uh, yeah, uh, the public seems to be on the over 62% of bets, 82% Ooh. of money. So that's kind of why that jumped from 46 to 47 and a half. So yeah, maybe, nice. maybe you come back on an under, maybe, you know, throw some yeah. of the defenses in as kind of a contrarian play. But uh, what about the captain spot? Who do you like? Yeah, I'm going with Nico Collins here. Um, you know, we've seen his playing time ramp up uh, in back to back games since his return. So wouldn't be shocked if we see that trend continue. Um, and have him top, you know, 80, 85% routes run rate this week. It's a must win game. So you might as well just max out someone like Nico Collins. Um, saw a target on 33% of his routes last week, which is elite uh, with CJ Stroud back. And, you know, Noah Brown and Robert Woods are banged up right now. Tank Dell's obviously out for the season. So we could see Collins uh, see even more targets here. So um, I, I think just given the percentage of targets, he could be getting from CJ Stroud here. It does make sense for him uh, to be, uh, you know, an optimal captain type of play here. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, he should be the number one guy no matter what. Uh, even if those guys are healthy, I think Nico has yeah. kind of established himself, especially without Dell as that number one guy. Uh, for me, speaking of number one guys, got to go Michael Pittman Jr. here. Uh, eight or more catches in 10 of his 15 games. And remember, one of them he got knocked out in. So really 10 of 14 fully healthy games. Um, a little bit quieter these last couple of weeks, but um, I do expect the Colts to be trailing more often than not. So I, I think this is a good spot for Pittman. Houston is number 27 in DVOA against number one wide receivers, uh, giving up the uh, giving up 81, uh, 88.1, excuse me, a schedule adjusted yards per game to number one wide receivers. That's second most according to FTN. So a uh, good matchup here for Pittman. Remember this Houston defense was the one I gave up that, that big, you know, 200 plus yard game to Amari Cooper a couple weeks ago. So uh, could see a, a lot of uh, production from Pittman yet again. So like him uh, in the captain spot over Jonathan Taylor, who's just been a little bit, uh, a little bit off these last, uh, mm-hmm. l- last few weeks. Uh, who do you like for war value? Uh, I like Dalton Schultz, just, you know, again, investing in the Texans pass offense with CJ Stroud back. Uh, and Noah Brown and Robert Woods, if, you know, one or both are out or limited, that's going to lead to more targets for Schultz as well. Um, he also is an incentives uh, play this week where he needs six receptions uh, for quarter million dollars and 107 yards for another quarter million. Um, those are both in range for him specifically. It's it's already a matchup that does set up for more of a ceiling game for him. The Colts uh, very so zone heavy uh, defense. So, you know, Schultz typically gets uh, more production against zone. Um, so it makes sense. He's going to be one of the top plays in this game. You could even use him in the captain slot as a semi contrarian play, but overall, I think he's a great, you know, value play here. Yeah, absolutely. Like Schultz this week a lot. He's inside. Uh, I think he's my tight end five for the week. So yeah, he's up. Makes there. sense. Uh, I'm going with Devin Singletary here. Last six games with Damian Pierce back. 19 touches, 99 scrimmage yards per game. Only one touchdown, so getting a little unlucky in that category. But uh, Indianapolis, 24th in DVOA against the run. Uh, Singletary actually does have an incentive. He gets, I think it's 165 yards. Uh, he gets uh, like 125K, so not a big incentive. Doubt, you know, doubt he gets there, but it's a little bonus. But either way, I expect Houston to have more of a positive game script. Pierce, you know, the coaching staff mentioned he's been kind of learning a new – they've changed their scheme apparently since Pierce first went down with injury. Uh, so that's kind of why Pierce hasn't really been seeing as much work. So Singletary, good bet for 15 to 20 touches. Yet again, must-win game. Colts 24th in DVOA against the run. So uh, like Singletary this week for Houston. Uh, who do you like for dart throws? 
Uh, I like Kylan Granson, um, you know, because Andrew Ogletree's arrest, you know, landed him on the commissioner exempt list. Um, so that this four-way tight end committee for the Colts has now turned into more of a three-way committee. Um, and actually last week it was more of a two-way committee because, again, it's almost impossible to project these guys. But Will Mallory's playing time took a huge hit and Mo Alley Cox went way up. Uh, but the only consistent guy in this tight end group has been Kylan Granson. We can usually pencil him in for around a 45% routes run rate. Uh, that's where he's been over the last four. Uh, but he's also seen a pretty solid target rate of 23% over that stretch. He's actually had two games of 60 plus yards uh, over the last five. So that, w- that would be more than enough uh, on a single game slate to, to land him in the winning lineups. So, you know, he's the starting and lead tight end for the Colts. So he's, you know, not that much of a dart throw, but I think, you know, his roster ship will be a bit lower. So I think he's a guy that's kind of sneaky uh, and has a higher floor than people realize. Yeah, he's been he's been playing well, and especially when you take one of those guys out of the mix, that that does give yeah. at least yeah. some some type of floor. Because when it was four guys splitting it, I mean, they were all running around like 25, 30%. <laughs> so now he's granted his back up into the 50s, which is what he's yep. been in uh, most of the year. I'm going to go with the tight end as well. Uh, Brevin Jordan for the Texans. He played uh, 47% of the pass snaps, even with Schultz active last week. Ran around on 32% of the dropbacks. He's had multiple catches each of the last two games. And the Colts, according to FTN, giving up the third most schedule adjusted targets and the ninth most schedule adjusted yards to tight ends. Jordan's look good out there. He's playing a lot. Sometimes Schultz actually comes out of the game in, in certain personnel groupings. So, um, you know, Jordan, I think, is a guy who – you know, could could get a little more playing time than we are, you know, than he was earlier in the year, or than the Texans' number two tight end was earlier in the year. So, uh, like Jordan to keep it rolling here. I think I thought he looked good as a receiver uh, over these past uh, past month or so. Yeah, like if uh, Brown and Woods and or Woods uh, mm-hmm. neither have practiced yet, it does look like they're they're going to be game time decisions. It's a shorter week. They could use more two tight end sets if one or both are out. So that that could definitely lead to a big Brevin Jordan game. 